uncover the hidden secrets of tape lines type 1 tape, the amazing results and the few drawbacks from our comprehensive tests. Well, before we get stuck into the tests proper, let's have a quick look at the shell. This is a white shell, and as you can see here, it's got screws. And then we'll have a look at the tape. Now, this is a really nice milk chocolate brown looking tape. So it looks good. Let's see if it works good. I want to just show you this. This is the envelope appearance of the sweep. And you can see the minus 20 dB one is fairly smooth and just tapers off nicely. But the zero dB one, it's got that funny sort of kink at the beginning and then it's got a, a funny blip and a pip at the end. So we'll have a look at that a little bit deeper, a little bit later on, and we'll see what effect that has and why it might be important. That's a gorgeous buff ting. The silence is a very respectable, minus 74 dB, but there is some print through from the one kilohertz which is much lower than it was on the Type 2, but nevertheless it's there. We do a short bit of Patrick Patrickos. To me, this tape sounds really nice. It's got good dynamics and it sounds pretty good. So this is where we start to see some of the effects of this thing. This is the white noise and as you can see, zero dB. It's not bad, but it's a little bit, it's coming down a bit at the top end, which you can see here in comparison to the minus 20 dB. So that's something to look for. The zero dB pink noise, it looks pretty good. And again, the minus 20 looks a little bit better. Zero dB, one kilohertz, now look at this. This looks pretty good. Not much in the way of, of harmonic distortion. As you can see, it's really clean and there's just the first one at three kilohertz. Then we look at the minus 20 dB one and you can see there it's really, really clean. You know how often the three kilohertz looks a mess even if the one kilohertz doesn't? Well, look at this, this is really nice. This is the zero dB. And now looking at the minus 20 dB, that was really nice as well, which you'd expect. So it may come as a surprise when you look at this, the zero dB sweep. And as you can see, at around about 12 kilohertz, there's a kink. And then you've got not very much after that. Whereas the minus 20 dB keeps on going right up until 17 kilohertz. So, well, that explains the funny kink in the pip, I suppose, on the original envelope. What does that actually mean? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I'll so try to explain. what does that actually mean then? Is the tape any good or not? Well, what it actually means is this. Yes, it is a very, very good tape. It's got a wide frequency range for a Type 1. It's got reasonable noise levels for a Type 1. And, well, 17 kilohertz at minus 20 dB. That is absolutely good it that way. It's above average. Where it makes a big difference, though, is you saw that there was that little pip and thing. Unusually, there is very little distortion when you're driving this tape hard that the distortion is not going to be there. Well, instead of distorting, it just loses the higher frequencies. So as far as this tape's concerned, it would be very good for being used on something with an automatic gain control because you're not going to get the distortion that you'd normally get with that sort of thing. You're just going to get, it's going to be a little bit less bright, but it's going to be a reasonable recording. And so that's the way it is. If you were using this for heavy rock or something like that, when there's when it's fairly loud normally, you, you do it at about, I don't know, minus 5 dB as a, as a peak. And then when the really heavy stuff comes in, you wouldn't hear the distortion and you wouldn't notice the lack of high frequencies because it would really batch in well. But it wouldn't distort because it wouldn't be doing... It just doesn't distort. End of story. Beautiful. Anyway, that's it. Like and subscribe. If you like, please click on the little button down there. It tells people it's worth watching. And if you subscribe, well, it means that YouTube will bother sending you information about other ones. So, yeah, it's worth doing. And it helps the channel, helps me, and uh, makes it all worthwhile. Anyway, catch you another time. Thanks a lot. Cheers. There's a couple of good videos coming up here. Have a look at one of these.